Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm recording this on June 17th, 2012, and picking up right where we left off in the last episode. And what we were doing was we were continuing to work on moving the getter and setter methods out of application model. What we did was a while back we moved the data storage out of application model, uh, the user's configuration. So this information right here used to be stored in application model. We moved it into its own class called user configuration. And now we are moving the getters and setters for that out of application model. That makes a lot of sense when you describe it at that high level, but in practice, it's turned out to be kind of a pain in the butt and not necessarily a good idea, although it does look like it's slowly getting better. So I'm just gonna pick up where we left off with that, uh, which was just trying to get the last last getter and setter out, which is for yearly spending. To do that, we need to go into our yearly spending and say that it updates the application model. Actually, I say it just updates the model because it's not really the application model we're primarily concerned with anymore. And what we want to do is the same thing we did before. And that's going to fail because we are not updating that right now. And now that should pass. And the application model should be updated as well. And that will fail. And now it should pass. All right. Now we need to modify this to use user configuration. And now we can go in here, search for that. We are no longer gonna have any of these methods at all, which means we can get rid of this and this, which should cause our application model spy to stop compiling. But we no longer need this or that. Yep. And that all works. And while we're in here, is anybody using this? Save as dialog test is using it. All right. Now, Now what? So configuration panel 
is now operating directly on user configuration and also telling the application model when it's when it's been updated because we don't have any sort of observer on user configuration yet. And originally I was trying to avoid having that observer, but now I'm not so sure. I think it might actually be a good idea. Um, we also have this really weird circumstance where we pass in the user configuration and the application model. And honestly, I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Um, I Let's find everybody who's using this. Yeah, there's really no reason to do that. Um, I think I was thinking originally that this would now need to be set separately from this. I, I don't know exactly, but um, it doesn't make sense. So let's go ahead and refactor this. And take this out, just to be sure. We have everything, is everything passing tests? Yeah, yeah, everything's passing. So let's go ahead and take that out. Uh, before we do that, there, that should still work. Okay. Well, that cleans up my biggest concern with the way we were doing this before. So now an application frame. We are having to do that, pass in the new user configuration application model. Um, Who's using this? And do we really need it? Here, we could just as easily ask for a new application model, couldn't we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's tested. Yep, everything's still working. And here, I guess we're using it here. Well, Yeah, that's it's not really doing much for us. Let's go ahead and do that. And then for this, um, really not much need for it. In fact, okay, so there's There's that. Okay, so now I don't believe user or application model 
is using this method anymore, or application model test is. Yeah, the only, buddy who's, the only person who's using it is this, so let's just inline it. There. Now we can get rid of that. Okay, well that cleans things up nicely. And now that we've cleaned up configuration panel, it's still taking the application model. Um, it is a bit wonky the way we're pulling the user configuration out of the application model. Um, but this is the only place we're doing that so is it worth the cost of putting an observer pattern and the complexity of putting an observer pattern on user configuration? I don't know. My The reason I don't like the observer pattern, by the way, is because it makes your flow of operation uh, less obvious. Once you have the observer pattern, then doing something like this, user configuration dot set yearly spending is how we'd have to do it. Um, there's side effects to doing something like that. It seems like you're just updating a value, but in fact, you're triggering behaviors. Here, we're making that really explicit, and um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, now, the nice thing about the observer pattern is that you eliminate all the duplication you see here, but it's definitely kind of magical, and that's why I don't really, I, I don't really like the observer pattern. I don't like magic. I don't like things that make it difficult for a reader of the code to understand what the flow of control is. And one of the big objections people have to object-oriented programming is that stuff sort of happens and you don't know where or why things are happening. And a big part of that is the prevalence of the observer pattern, in my opinion, which is just endemic. I mean, everybody loves the observer pattern. Um, observer pattern is basically events, uh, technically maybe not quite the same, but it is basically the same idea. And um, I think events, events really really detract from the readability and understandability of code. So now that we've managed to clean this up and only have application model passing in, I think I think I'm inclined not to use the observer pattern. That said, if we don't use the observer pattern, we don't get rid don't get to get rid of the mock. So we have to do this configuration update called. So, hmm. Yeah. Let's see what else we've got going on. Take care of that. And we can't quite do that yet. And I'm not so sure about this. I'm pretty keen on getting rid of these spies. Let's go ahead and try the observer pattern. Let's see. I, I know I just <laughs> I know I just had a big rant about why I don't like events in the observer pattern, but I think it might clean things up. Let's go ahead and try it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of this save called with. Um, but uh, that is all the time we have for today's episode. So we will pick up with this next time. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I will see you then.